this popular influencer has been allegedly charged with breaking the internet after recent eye-popping content that was released directly on their social media platforms. More on this later. Allegedly, Shakir Stewart is the one that sent the flowers. And Shakir's mom said there was an incident that involved Diddy threatening her son because Diddy never allowed anyone else to date Kim. Apparently, Diddy left Shakir bleeding on a hotel floor in Italy after breaking a chair on his head. So, if anything, that part about Diddy hitting Kim with a chair and telling her that no one is allowed to have her is somewhat believable. But what I want to know is if the flowers were actually from a producer or someone Kim was actually seeing at the time. Is it possible that the producer may have been a secret lover? I don't know. Anyway, Kim then continued and wrote in the memoir that Diddy apologized apologized and told her that he didn't know what came over him but she was afraid for her safety because they were in a private hospital room and no one would hear her even if she screamed like her life depended on it and as she lay in the hospital bed diddy allegedly said i was just so jealous you know how i am i'm sorry baby i promise i'll never put my hands on you again i swear sent a group text to her friends saying he got me and she also implied in those texts that she believes she has been poisoned a long lost flash drive surfaced with kim it was written in the months leading up to her sudden death it was a manuscript that is about 40 pages long though it was not verified it had some jaw-dropping allegations in one chapter kim talked about how you know who had a short few uh sent the flowers he hits him uh, allegedly hits him with a chair so he hits the dude with the chair first and then Kim Porter gets the chair next. That made her have to think twice about what she is doing around him. At one time, he sent Kim to the hospital after doing her bad with a chair. In this supposed manuscript, Kim described the incident. She said, we were supposed to go out for dinner, but he was in a foul mood. Sean yelled, what the fu- uh, one would have to walk on eggshells as I came out of the bathroom, but I found him- So she just came out of the bathroom. Holding flowers, so I smiled. Found him holding flowers. You brought me flowers. Sean yelled, no, so who the f are they from? I was bewildered and told him honestly, I don't know, probably just a fan. Kimora Lee just dropped a jaw-dropping revelation about how Kim Porter really passed away. And yeah, you guessed it. It has everything to do with you know who. Sources are saying Kimora finally decided to share Kim Porter's memoir. You know, the same one she was allegedly writing before she died mysteriously that also somehow vanished off the face of the earth. Well, according to sources, it turns out the memoir didn't vanish off the face of the earth. The world was just not ready for it. An explosive snippet from the memoir just got released. And let's just say, if you think everything you've heard about Kim and Diddy's relationship bad, then you are about to get an eye-opening moment because it was a lot worse than we thought. Also, you know, all those rumors you were hearing Kim possibly being poisoned by, you know, who? Well, it just might be true. This story is one big mess. Kimora Lee and friends always suspected that Kim's death wasn't caused by pneumonia, but you know who thinks otherwise and says three days before she passed, she wasn't feeling well, she had the flu, and she sent the kids over to my house so they wouldn't get sick. All this is bigger than Diddy. It's bigger than Diddy, bro. Cause you know who else they was doing investigation on during that whole time period? It was the mayor and the politicians in New York City. They turn around, give him the city, the key to the city. All the mayor people that he brought on here in New York City are all resigning. It's, they all resigning. People ain't going to tie this together. But if you look at it, you have to say because of Mayor Adams and his relationship with Diddy, it brought on the Southern District of New York to start investigating Diddy on civil lawsuits that was put against him. Because the feds is going after all these politicians in New York City. He had a fizz. Everyone that was not my color believed me. It was my people that needed convincing. If someone like the Diddler is your hero, then you should hurry up and go to hell with him. If someone like Jay-Z is your hero, then, you know, just be glad you're not talented so he could sacrifice you like he tried to do me and he succeeded with Aaliyah. Stevie J should be charged. Mary J. Blige should also be charged. Jennifer Lopez should definitely be charged. Jay-Z should be charged. Khaled should be charged. Rick Ross should be charged. Usher should be charged and tried with him. 
off of Justin Bieber alone. Now, Carisha and Rick Ross just sat down together in the interview. I know. Two Diddy Doo Wop Bops, what a reunion. Drum roll. Drake. Drake. Oprah. Oprah. J-Lo. J-Lo. A-Rod. A-Rod. Will Smith. Will Smith. <laughs> Alicia Keys. Alicia Keys. Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber. Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. Mark Wahlberg. Did he start snitching? He better. But the only thing I'm interested in him talking about is everything he knows about Kathy Coriana White. See, I know you know what happened to Corey. <laughs> Did he? I know that. You and Jay-Z. Down in Vegas, the towel with Claudia. Why don't you just talk about Kathy? That might help. That might help a lot. Kathy Coriana White, Jay-Z's pregnant mistress, who died 24 hours after she announced that she was going public with their relationship and the baby. While he was married to Beyonce. <sighs> was Jack. it an aneurysm, Diddy? Or are you the one who paid the same coroner that you... Mm. <laughs> oh, Diddy, you should talk. Do you feel the federal government will probably speak to Jay-Z in regards... They already have. Oh. They talked to him before he made that Super Bowl announcement. And that interesting. He was questioned by the feds before he made the Super Bowl announcement. Blink twice. <laughs> Oh, this about to get fun for me. So what are your thoughts on all the celebrity, his celebrity friends that denounced uh, those allegations and were like, this is false and, you know, Liars. they were saying... Yeah, should they, come, should they speak Liars. up now? Should they speak up now? I think it's getting a little too late for those who are complicit. For the people that have been denying it, you know what, Let, let's not be coy. You know, I am Jaguar. So let, let's just keep it a buck. Let's keep it a bean. Stevie J should be charged. Mary J. Blige should also be charged. Jennifer Lopez should definitely be charged. Jay-Z should be charged. Khaled should be charged. Rick Ross should be charged. Usher should be charged and tried with him off of Justin Bieber alone.
Snitching on nobody from Harlem, man. I give you a couple cats down in D.C. doing their thing, out of town doing their thing, but um, I'm not snitching on nobody in Harlem because when I come home, I'm still going to be... Every, every nigga was at, at this nigga Diddy party. They act like they don't know that nigga now. Like, let's pause it when we see somebody we know. Happy birthday me. Mary, you know you was damn well at a Diddy party. Stop the cap. Mary, we see you. We love you, though. Carisha. Sean? Ooh, nah, nah, we, we gonna get everybody. Who are these people? I don't know some of these names. I don't know. Is this Quincy? Oh, Taylor, Taylor, hey, how you doing? Back outside, oh, you're the Drake song. Who's this? Who's this? Okay. I noticed that OT Genesis in the back. <laughs> Who's this? Nah, there's a lot of people who can't this shit. Ain't this a nigga, um, Lil Meech's son, or Big Meech's son? Am I tripping? It's Travis Scott, ain't it? It's lit! French? Ain't that C Breezy? Okay. Is it Swiss? Now I ain't gonna lie, I expect Odell Beckham Jr. to be at some freak offs. I ain't gonna hold you. All of these uh, big deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. TG Jakes, any of them, the, all, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. Now, I've had to turn down $50 million four times. Wait a minute. Did Cat Williams just expose Diddy for offering him over $50 million to bend him over? Because, because, because in 30 years, I've done nothing but collect information, knowledge, and your secrets. Child, the details of Diddy's recent arrest are getting nastier by the minute because word on the street is Cat Williams was one of the many people that Diddy tried to violate at them pre-off parties. It turns out Diddy was so desperate to get a taste of Cat's hole that he even went as far as offering him over $50 million for a decade-long worth of access to his body. But get this, y'all. Not only did Diddy want to misuse Cat's body like this, but he allegedly put a clause in that contract that allowed him and his freak-off partner to sleep with cat with no form of protection, lube, or baby oil. They just wanted to emasculate him and dive in raw. According to Cat, he has all the receipts to prove it, and he's more than ready to submit it to the feds the minute they ask him for it. Okay, so as most of y'all know by now, Diddy is currently rotting off in prison after Homeland Security arrested him for trafficking and transportation of unsuspecting S into the U.S. for his infamous freak-off parties. In fact, as we speak, Diddy is currently facing up to 100 years in jail, and to make things even worse, a judge just denied his bail request, even after he offered $50 million, as well as both of him and his mom's multi-million dollar mansions in Miami as collateral, and his one of his kids. The judges are really standing on business, and they want that demon to stay in his maggot-infested cell till that trial starts. As if that wasn't bad enough, he's facing up to 100 years in jail and even his defense team is unsure about exactly how they're going to get him out of this now when it comes to the exact details of the arrest it turns out that during the raid of his house six months ago they found firearms ammunition and more than a thousand bottles of lubricant during a recent press briefing by u.s prosecutor damian williams he said they also found three semi-automatic with defaced serial numbers and a drum magazine. Prosecutors also accused Diddy of creating a criminal enterprise whose members, under his direction, engaged in forced labor, kidnapping, arson, and bribery. He and coerced women and others around him to fulfill his desires, as well as striking, punching, dragging, throwing objects at, and kicking them. But this is where things started getting even crazier, because the prosecutors explicitly said that Diddy wasn't running this enterprise on his own, and that he had other celebrities and other powerful people who were heavily involved in these criminal activities as well. This information was revealed in his indictment, and I quote, For decades, Sean Combs, aka Puff Daddy, aka P. Diddy, aka Diddy, aka P. D., aka Love, the defense 
force and coerce women and others around him to fulfill his desires, protect his reputation, and conceal his conduct. Got into it with her baby daddy, Rick Ross, for the one millionth time. It's unclear why exactly she woke up that morning, and the first thing she decided to do was come at Rick. But from the looks of it, she and Rick's family members were having some kind of disagreement, and she just decided to show them that she was the queen of pettiness by coming on IG Live to spill some incriminating tea about him. She started off her rant by claiming that Rick put a hit out on her. However, the people he paid to take her out ran off with his money, and went behind his back to warn her about what he tried to do to her. And mind you, Tia is the mother of his child, and he had the audacity to try and unalive her. If that's what he's capable of doing to the mother of his baby, can y'all even imagine what he would do to a stranger that crosses him? He needs to be in jail. So we finna clock this tea right here. Renee says, you wanna stay keeping up? We finna talk about some real tea. Your brother over there paying people to put hits out? He over there paying people to put hits out? and running off with his money and it's getting back to me. So now, now I'm finna send the feds over there to y'all empire. See, you had the right today. You keep playing with me, I'm finna tear y'all empire down. Tia said Rick is also responsible for the death of several people, including a woman named Miss Carol, whose death is still unresolved and actively being investigated by the cops and her family. According to Tia, the woman was unalived on her way home by Rick and his crew. Oh, but that wasn't all. We finna talk about some real tea. Your brother over there paying people to put hits out. He over there paying people to put hits out and running off with his money and it's getting back to me. So now, now I'm finna send the feds over there to y'all mother empire. See, you had the right today. Say what now? Natia Kemp exposing the names of the people that Rick Ross unalived in order to keep his freak off relationship with Diddy a secret. Diddy said Ross, which they good buddies, okay? Mm -hmm. They, they, they gay. Who? Both. Diddy and Ross and Callie. They all gay. Okay? DJ Callie, Rick. Ross and Diddy? Yeah. They all gay? Yeah. Gotcha. Right. Ooh, wee. I'm gonna need y'all to hold my hands for this one. Because Rick Ross's baby mama, Tia Kemp, just took this entire drama with Diddy to a whole new level of messiness. After she jumped on IG Live and spilled the tea about how Rick Ross has been taking people out, Tia even went as far as revealing the names of the innocent people that Rick has unalived. And according to her, there are even more skeletons in his closet. But she's just gonna reveal the rest after she gets protection from the feds. Now, this ain't the first time that Tia has dragged Rick into Diddy's case and exposed some disturbing information about him. Not too long ago, she also called him out for being one of Diddy's power bottoms, but this allegation about him taking people out is way more serious than anything she's ever accused him of. And word on the street is, the feds are already working to get her into witness protection. Okay, so this entire mess went down just a few days ago. This revelation caused a mixed reaction on social media, with some people saying that Tia's just doing this because she's mad that that Rick dumped her for a younger woman. And others are also slamming her for sitting on this information for all these years and only spilling the tea after Rick Ross pissed her off. One person said, yeah, she may get on here and do a lot and talk a lot of ish about him, but maybe y'all didn't hear what she said. Rick paid somebody to unalive her. Instead, they took his money and got the information to her. I don't even care for Tia, but paying someone to unalive your child's mother, but wouldn't even pay her child support is out of pocket another person said and for all those calling her bitter and saying she's lying i want to know this there's no way on earth a man with everything to lose wouldn't sue her for defamation if what she's saying about him wasn't true if not to win money but to win legal silence now it's unclear when exactly rick sent the hint out on her for her to be taken out by his people but folks think it was just months ago when she exposed him for being diddy's freak off partner yeah y'all heard that right a few months ago when Diddy's house got raided by Homeland Security, Tia jumped on IG Live and accused Rick of running to Miami to lay low for a while because he's scared that he might be next to be investigated after Diddy. According to Tia, Diddy has multiple tapes of Rick getting freaky at these parties and he plans to turn everything over to the feds at the right time. You big my Will, I want you to talk. talk. Don't be scared now. No Diddy, huh? You scared now, huh? I know y'all on them tapes. Freaky bitch. I know he is. Ten churn half It's time to show them churns now. I ain't gonna let off you. <laughs> 
You should have been shut this big mouth hole up. You know it. You know it. Sip your fruit, bass. I'm mad right now. F ain't hit me and my baby prom in two weeks. I'm gonna go and let out. Turn that down, man. Turn it down. It's quiet right now. F what you quiet for? Nobody want to see your Louis outfits and sneakers. You gotta realize, man. You gotta. You, you, he learned from Andre Harrell. He learned from Russell Simmons. He learned from Clyde Davis. You understand? When those people are 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 telling you that. They were in heavy into the drugs. They was heavy into beating women and doing things at that age, at, at that crazy stage. That's going to make him think that he could get away with the same thing that they was getting away with back then. You understand? The things that he was saying, you know, the touchy-feely between two men and all that stuff like that, man. All that's, he learned that from them dudes. When I told y'all the story, when me and my man went up to Russell Simmons and he had a house and he had a... Uh, uh, um, a man in bikini draws in his bedroom, in his bed. You understand, bro? This is that he learned. I, I'm assuming he learned it from them. CNN senior legal analyst commented that Diddy is looking at a minimum of 15 years in prison. He also said that while Diddy's lawyers might claim that the prosecution has no one claiming they were forced to participate in the parties, having Cassie's video and multiple witnesses will be hard to counter. He also laid out how the feds would use racketeering charges to bring Diddy down. We didn't we didn't shame we didn't shame Jay-Z when Foxy Brown came out and said, man, Jay-Z was fing me when I was 16 years old with that harsh. Foxy Brown said that. Did nobody shame uh, Dame Dash when he got with Aaliyah right after R. Kelly? Man, we can go on and on. Foxy was signed to Jay-Z's Rockefeller Records at a very young age, and their close working relationship fueled speculation that their connection was more than professional. While there has been no legal investigation into these claims, they remain part of the broader narrative about the treatment of women in hip-hop during that time. Foxy and Wild should be coming up so long work with, work with her. You know, yeah. You guys work pretty well together. Yeah, yeah. It's that, that, uh... That, that male female you know what I mean point of view though you, you just that our point of view is so strong that it has to be you can't be ignored you know what I mean it's like an ordinary point of view it's like very controversial you know you got to speak about it so it's cool it's cool you guys get along pretty well yeah yeah so Fox is he's 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 a baby but she listens to me you know what I mean she's tough you know what I mean she she's a strong she's a strong she's a brat but she listens to me so it's cool you know what I mean Baby girl, she's good. She's cool people. The allegations against Jay-Z and Diddy illustrate a common theme in the 1990s music industry, particularly in hip-hop. Both moguls have been accused of manipulating power dynamics to exploit young women. You gonna hate me for this one. Oh. Jay-Z, Pharrell, Diddy. Damn, are you? Club Shay Shay's podcast is turning into this go-to spot for artists spilling the tea, and Usher just spilled a whole pot. He dished on the supposed shady stuff about Jay-Z and Diddy, spilling the survival secrets. But hold up, he didn't stop there. Apparently, there's an even bigger mystery than Jay-Z and Diddy, and he's pointing fingers at none other than Queen Bey herself, Beyonce. Yeah, Usher went there, talking about some next-level enigma with Mrs. Carter. A bit of a reckless state for me because I think some of the actions that I've taken, some of the decisions that I've made, began to sabotage me. And it may have been personal sabotage because I just wanted some idea. This week, Usher spilled some behind the scenes beans on Club Shay Shay, the podcast hosted by the former football champ, Shannon Sharp. Sharp went in with the tough questions, asking Usher if he ever passed up on a collaboration and later regretted it. Usher's response, hold on to your hat. You gonna hate me for this one, he said. Jay-Z, Farrell, Diddy and me were supposed to be a group. Yeah, that's crazy. I didn't say, no. I didn't say, yeah. I think that we just got caught up. We all got caught up in the moment. We were talking about it and having secret meetings about it. Usher went on to share more on the what could have been saga. We were talking about music and how we were gonna flip it and the business side of things. Somehow we just got distracted and it never happened. That's one that I actually wish would have happened. While Usher has collaborated individually with Diddy, Jay-Z, and Farrell, the epic foursome never joined forces to drop a track together. Back in 2002, Usher teamed up with Diddy on the chart-topping Billboard single, I Need a Girl, Part 1. The collaboration continued as Usher joined the Bad Boy Records founder on Better on the Other Side, a heartfelt tribute to the late Michael Jackson. Fast forward a few years, and Usher found himself in the studio with both Jay-Z and Beyonce for his fourth studio album, Here I Stand. Jay-Z dropped a verse on Best Thing 
Sting, while Beyonce lent her vocals to the remix of Love in This Club. And let's not forget Usher's 2012 Lookin' For Myself album, where Farrell jumped on the track, Twisted. Absolutely, Farrell and Jay-Z have both dipped their toes into the supergroup scene. Farrell joined forces with Lupe Fiasco and Kanye West to create Child Rebel Soldier back in the 2000s. Meanwhile, Jay-Z had his stint in the New York-based Collective Murder Inc., alongside Jay Rule and DMX. However, maybe that's when Usher was exposed to the real face of Beyonce. Usher shared a charming anecdote about meeting Beyonce back in the day when she was part of the girl group, The Dolls. Managed by Daryl Simmons, a producer and songwriter who collaborated with Usher, The Dolls visited Atlanta for the first time. Usher, being the responsible teenager, was asked to look after them. I think I looked over them while they were doing something in the house. I had to watch over because I was like the, you know, the authority because I guess I was the teenager at the time, Usher explained. He clarified that he wasn't a nanny or a manny, but more of a chaperone ensuring they stayed out of trouble. Reflecting on those early days, Usher admitted he didn't foresee Beyonce's global stardom, but he noticed her unique talent and brightness. He expressed genuine excitement for her incredible success, describing it as really great for my sister, to see that she's done so amazing and continue to thrive and just get bigger and better. Usher and Beyonce's bond extends beyond mere professional collaboration. It's a testament to a genuine friendship cultivated over the years. Their history is peppered with joint projects and mutual support, showcasing a camaraderie that goes beyond the spotlight. In 2003, Usher took the lead in Beyonce's Naughty Girl music video, revealing not just their professional chemistry, but also their impressive dancing skills. The duo continued to captivate audiences in 2008 when they delivered a powerhouse duet of Love in This Club Part 2 at the BET Awards, leaving the crowd in awe of their vocal prowess and stage charisma. Usher hasn't shied away from expressing his admiration for Beyonce, acknowledging her profound impact on the music industry, cultural landscape, and her philanthropic endeavors. Beyond the glitz and glamour, he sees her as a dedicated mother of three. Usher's repeated affirmations of their bond, labeling her as his sister, underscore the depth of their... Music mogul Sean Diddy Combs is staying behind bars after a Manhattan judge ruled against his $50 million bail request citing the risk of witness intimidation in his ongoing sex trafficking case. Prosecutors revealed disturbing new text messages between Combs and his alleged victims, including messages referencing a shocking 2016 assault. During the hearing, prosecutor Emily Johnson shared texts where victims described their experiences, comparing them to the allegations made by Cassie Ventura, Combs' ex-girlfriend. One victim wrote, I feel like I'm reading my own sexual trauma adding that the similarities to Ventura's claims were sickening. Combs, who was accused of manipulating and gaslighting his victims, also sent desperate messages to Ventura following a violent altercation caught on video. Despite his defense team's argument that Combs had reformed after rehab, the judge ruled that his release could still threaten witnesses. The trial is set to continue in October, with Combs facing serious charges. Guys, don't put those pills that they get to the girls in the champagne bottles because they popping them in front of them. Combs faces three federal charges, racketeering conspiracy, sex trafficking by force, fraud or coercion, and transportation to engage in prostitution. Combs has pleaded not guilty to those charges. In an unsealed indictment, prosecutors allege Combs, quote, abused, threatened and coerced women and others around him. Guys, don't put those pills that they get to the girls in the champagne bottles because they popping them in front of them. Most of those girls, especially if they like mixed drinks, you understand, they see the bottles when they open them and they try to keep their eyes on because they don't want to get no kind of drugs put in their system. But what they don't understand is in the orange juice and it's in the cranberry juice. They didn't put the pills and the stuff in there, the roofies, the ecstasy, the ease, all whatever they, they put it in the juice. Now, those girls who like the mixed drinks, you understand what I'm saying? They gonna, pour their own sexual act because they don't understand it ain't in the bottles it's in the juice those guys they learn that and they put it to those girls who don't know no better my baby bro we here it's time. tomorrow it's time it's time, it's time. what you time. gonna do to that thing man yeah they better tune in they better ah! tune in let's go i'm gonna give it to you raw parents make sure that you don't get fucked Straight up, there's a lot of fucking going on in the entertainment industry. The music industry, everybody's getting caught up in something. I'm, I'm, I'm cured now though, everybody. I'm cured, everything's good, you know. Y'all can have me over for dinner, everything is good. As you can see here, this is a drum magazine, large capacity. And it contains, I believe, 59 rounds. 
I mentioned as well that we recovered three AR-15s. This is a close-up shot of one of the AR-15s, and you can see right here the serial number has been thoroughly defaced. Another picture of more ammunition and parts of two AR-15s right there. Now, I want to be clear about two things. First, this office is determined to investigate and prosecute anyone who engages in sex trafficking, no matter how powerful or wealthy or famous you may be. No one should doubt our commitment on that. A year ago, Sean Combs stood in Times Square and was handed a key to New York City. Today, he's been indicted and will face justice in the Southern District of New York. Second, we are not done. This investigation is ongoing, and I encourage anyone with information about this case to come forward and to do it quickly. Anyone with information can call 1-877-4-HSI-TIP. I want to express my deep appreciation for the victims and witnesses who have used their voices and helped bring this criminal conduct to light. We would not be here without them. I also want to thank the dedicated case agents on the HSI Trafficking in Person Squad in New York. They have been with us since day one and have worked tirelessly on this investigation. They will continue to be invaluable partners to us. I also want to thank the incredible agents and analysts from SCNY who have also provided tremendous assistance on this case. I'm deeply grateful for their continued work. And finally, I want to thank the outstanding career prosecutors from SCNY who are handling this case. Meredith Foster, Emily Johnson, Chrissy Slavic, Madison Smizer, and Mitzi Steiner, and their supervisor. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear friends. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. This is a special birthday for both of us. Because yeah. today, not today, yesterday, the whole year is love. Mm -hmm. It's first birthday. Mm -hmm. I started a new chapter in my life, and mm -hmm. you did too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? For sure. You ain't had a drink in a year. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You look phenomenal. And this is called the so Rock Water Cheers. Ooh. So I drink some rock. Mm -hmm. You don't drink. How do we cheers with your water in my White grape Syrah. It's called two chains clinks. It's called two clinks. When I die, I want my last words to be. Stop. I oh, did it. Yeah. <laughs> hey. He got photos and videos of Diddy Freakos. When they did that raid, you understand? What they did was prior to the raid, they reviewed that civil lawsuit. And that civil lawsuit told it Cassie civil lawsuit was Lerat. Lerat had already did it. Lerat hadn't did his yet, did he? Did Lerat do his lawsuit before the raid or after the raid? Oh, before, before. Yeah. So what they did was they reviewed both of those civil lawsuits and found that there was some criminal activity in those lawsuits. We spoke that on Art of Dialogue. We spoke about that on your show. I said if they really wanted him, all they had to do was review those civil lawsuits. And once they find the criminal activity in those, they could bring them in. Now, did, did the Federal Bureau of Investigation in Miami do it? No, they didn't. Did California do it? No, they did not. The Southern District of New York, they took it upon themselves and put on that raid and everything based on the information they found in Cassie lawsuit and the information they found in Little Rod lawsuit. Okay, now, <laughs> we need, um, Alcohols? Right. Alcohols. Right. Not just one alcohol. Alcohols. Right. Just Plurals. different blend. You need Wins. the ladies, you need the booze. You need, um, some water. <laughs> <laughs> For watering plants? No. What? No, no, I don't know if guys have noticed this, like, a lot of ladies drink water at parties. They right. just, you know, so you have, if you don't have what they need, they're gonna leave. Right. Gotta right. keep them there. Right. You need, you need locks on the doors. <laughs> Okay, this is sounding kind of dangerous now. It's a little kinky, but yeah, you know, yeah. broccoli, but just right. check it out. You need um, a lot of heat. A lot heat. of heat. 
Yeah. Heat, you mean that physically the place has to be hot? You don't have no air conditioning. No air conditioning. No. Why is that? Heat affects the alcohol, and it also affects, like, um, you know, everybody gets a little bit more comfortable and loose. It builds up a nice little sweat. That just sounds disgusting. What are you talking about? Depends on the way you look at it. Depends. Oh, people yeah. start getting kind of, it gets kind of sexy. No one realizes that after Diddy was arrested, Jay-Z will be affected by three creepy influences. One dot public image and business partnerships. Jay-Z and Diddy have had a long friendship, both in life and in music. Now that Diddy has gotten into such big trouble, Jay-Z will inevitably be implicated. People might even start to question whether he has been involved in illegal activities just like Diddy. As a result, Jay-Z's public image is likely to change, and his business partnerships will gradually decrease. This is not going to be good for him. Dot to dot relationship with Diddy. Ever since Diddy's arrest, Jay-Z has been silent, with no statements or actions from him. This is not a good time to stand up for a friend. If Jay-Z makes any move, he could end up facing the same fate as Diddy. Therefore, he has no choice but to distance himself from Diddy. After all, self-preservation is the priority right now. 3. Legal risk Although Jay-Z hasn't been charged with anything, 50 Cent seems to be stirring up conspiracy theories online hinting that Jay-Z may be involved in some way with the things Diddy is accused of. If the authorities take notice of these claims, Jay-Z could face legal risks, and it could be difficult for him to get out of trouble at that point. Oh, that's what we're doing. Hey yo, hey, yo, check this out. Um, tonight's a big night. Um, I give all glory to God that, you know, I got a chance to be, you know, young and pretty when they gave me this award. And, you know, and I got my friends, I got my family around, and tonight's gonna be a special night. Yeah. The honor of you. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. But, but, but check this out. We here to do a toast. Yeah. And I saw G. I saw you, um, you know, warming up uh, to me, Jay. And I know you had that. And I saw you when you did it. And it was smooth. I like the way that you chose the right, the right introduction. But now you got to make a toast for Diddy. Yeah. And I know you didn't. I know you didn't practice that. <laughs> I, I gotta get you where you go off the top of the head, so it's a toast. And then, the second person making the toast is casting the oh. yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> hey, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We, 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 listen. Hold on. I don't know how you keep holding it. Listen. I just want to say, Bad boy for life. Yeah.